CRCSI is a government initiative from the CRC program and it's been going now for about 12 years and its main challenge is to bring together the government sector and the private sector and the research sector to undertake big challenging research to find solutions for some of Australia's big issues. Let me start with the National Positioning Infrastructure which is a program designed to deliver two centimetre positioning accuracy using global navigation satellite systems to anybody, anywhere, outdoors, in real time. What you're trying to do is replace humans, but also replace error from humans. And so by greater accuracy and less manpower, you improve the efficiency of the farming system in this case. There's much more exciting ventures in front of it as it gets adopted. The NRM Hub is a, a federal government initiative together with the, the NRM Alliance which is developing spatial technologies and systems to deliver high quality satellite imaging to the rangeland growers of Central Australia. It helps with measuring available grass. It can help us determine if land is degrading or repairing with time-lapse technology, determine stocking rates. It will analyse, map and produce the information products in the form that the farmers need. It'll change the way we make decisions on a, a six monthly basis, it'll change the way we do our further development. Probably uh, a lot of areas that it can help with that we haven't even thought of yet. Envision is a system uh, which is designed to help urban planners um, plan for the next generation of improvements to cities. It allows you to see roughly what's going to happen over the next few years in terms of land sale and potential demolitions. And the second piece of software then, ESP, that allows us to drag and drop houses onto a site. And houses, I mean like attached, semi-detached, walk-up apartments, high-rise, whatever you want, trees, roads, schools. We've assessed all of these housing typologies and you can bring them, drag them and drop them into space. Uh, rearrange the alignment of the cadastres so you can break up the land and re-subdivide it and then it allows you to assess how much carbon, stormwater, energy, water that area will need. This way planners can really quickly come up with different scenarios for how that little precinct could look. So it's all about trying to get the tools in place so that local governments and state governments can more effectively manage small redevelopments that generally don't have the money to get assessed fully. It has the potential to change the way we look at planning into the future. We've developed a flight management system for Ergon Energy uh, to help them manage the 150,000 kilometres of power lines across over a million square kilometres of a rural and remote outback Queensland. It is just a really smart and efficient way of, of setting out flight lines for aircraft and for acquiring uh, costly imagery in the most efficient way. The easiest way to think of roams is basically we provide information intelligence service to infrastructure owners. So we deliver to them representations of the real world held within a virtual world or in a computer simulation. It doesn't need to be just applied to power lines, it could be applied to uh, the road network, it could be applied to councils, trees if they gave uh, provided a profile, gas line, mines, etc. So this is basically helping clients identified across their whole network, so from macro level, the risk vegetations imposing on their network, basically strategically responding to that risk, so deciding when to spend, how much to spend, and, and, and where to spend that money. When Google brought to the consumers Google Earth, we try and think of Rome in a similar way that we're taking this virtual world to the enterprise, you know, to the infrastructure owners. The project offers the ability to see the patterns in cancer and in particular to look at where there are inequalities. So what we're looking to produce is an atlas of cancer, cancer incidence and cancer survival based on the latest statistical technology that will give us a realistic picture of the pattern of cancer in Australia. What they're able to do is have a look at the distribution of people with cancer in society, to have a look at the causal factors and we can stack those up. Um, around the patients and, uh, and to then predict where additional outbreaks of cancer are going to occur um, and then manage those 
those predictions to try and reduce the outbreak of cancer. So it's moving us from a treatment regime to a societal regime of prevention. This will help us to answer those problems, get resources where they're needed, get doctor support where it's needed, educate patients about early diagnosis, all of those things in the community where it's needed. While our focus is on cancer, the theory that's behind these models can be used for all sorts of diseases, not just cancer, diabetes, chronic diseases, all of the things that are really important to our society. There are many things now that are happening in policy, in government in Queensland, to improve the situation for cancer for rural patients. This is precisely what we want to see. So this project will give us that data, that information, and we'll be able to use that, go to government, say this is what we need, and really make a difference. We have developed a really innovative suite of digital elevation models right across urban Australia, 200,000 square kilometres, which enable us to monitor sea level rise or flooding to the nearest few centimetres. Earlier this year, we adapted that technology for the Vanuatu cyclone and were able to deploy it within 24 hours to show, regrettably, the enormous damage that was occurring across Vanuatu as a result of Cyclone Pan. We have to talk about anyhow, but we have to move. We probably must move. From no good way, too late. Too late, or something can by too late. We probably must move. And that long, save our village on top of here. We would count the number of houses that were flooded, the length of roads that were flooded, and it would deploy that using a simple web-based technology that anybody could get access to. So it was used in the recovery effort. We're told it's had a significant difference to the people of Vanuatu. We've had 80 students come through the program. They're able to explore ideas that perhaps the pressures of research fellows and professors aren't able to spend that sort of time exploring new ideas. Uh, exploring what the industry is doing globally in that particular niche. There have been numerous PhDs picked up in national plans. Some of them have been employed straight away into these programs because of the knowledge they've developed over those few years. When I first started doing my PhD, I had a number of different sources and access to different sources of data. I was able to achieve a truly massive piece of work simply because of the support from CRCSI to actually get access to this information. They don't hold your hand, but they enable you and facilitate you to get in there and get the most out of it. If you're constantly helping people to be the best they can be and facilitate that transition from academia back into industry, only good things can happen. The future is a very promising future for, for this research. Um, if we think there's been a lot of change over the last decade and a half, then we haven't seen anything yet. There's going to be an exponential increase in the effect of these technologies. Uh, so our challenge is to harness uh, those changes, to perhaps see them just a little bit more quickly than would otherwise be the case if we weren't here, and then to convey the use of those technologies to our partners in smart ways so they can adapt them quickly and deploy them effectively.